In today's exciting, fun-packed episode of Tetracan Super Monoblock, we answer the question, is it worth spending a bit of extra money for a branded solder sucker? And I'll give you a really quick answer. In my experience, no. Here's the one I've been using since the beginning, over a five or six year period. It's got kind of messy. I've got a little focus on, but I hope you can see that this tip is a bit burnt from being pushed up against a 350 degrees Celsius soldering iron. So I thought, right, I'll um, maybe get a more expensive one. And the options to me seem to be this engineer solder sucker made in Japan uh, that a lot of people give good reviews for although I've also heard some bad things about it which I'll get to and this Weller 7874B soldering pump and I say Weller in the loosest possible terms because it seems to be a much more expensively made aluminium unit than the sort of plastic one I've got here but basically that's a Weller sticker, so um, I imagine that the same manufacturer is providing this item to a range of companies. So, initially I was pretty pleased with both, but frankly they've both got a problem with blockage. Let me show you this. When you push that out, this pin at the centre comes all the way out of this nozzle, so if you've got blocked solder in there, let's get push that out. This one works more or less the same way. This one... I don't know if you can see that, but the pin in it comes all the way out of the metal socket, but basically you've got a length of uh, silicon tube here. And so starting with this one, what I found was this kind of worked the best of the three in terms of it's quite dinky and easy to use with one hand while I'm soldering with this hand, but this gets blocked really often. And it's not like a huge pain in the neck to clear it. You just take that off and you get a, I don't know, a small screwdriver or whatever and push the solder out of it. But if you're doing a lot of desoldering, like say you're replacing all the capacitors in a PCB, I mean that really interrupts your workflow. It really slows you down. I would maybe use this on 30, 40 joints before I needed to you know, unscrew this and clean anything out of there or pick at that but it's every second or third joint with this which considering this guy here cost me maybe like three pounds or something and that costs nearly 20 I don't find it acceptable and then this one a bit stiff to use with one hand but okay not quite as effective as this but more effective than this one that I can't seem to multitask and reassemble while speaking and it got blocked less often than either of those but then when it got blocked it got blocked spectacularly I had to completely take this part off and push through there and put a little file in there and even once I cleaned all that and relubricated it, um, it it's working again now but it would get to here, and you know that last bit where it clicked? That didn't work. It took a lot of taking it apart and reassembling it to get it back to the stage where it works again. So I got further into the process that I was using before I had the problem, but it really derailed me for five minutes. And I'm sure you'll know if you're doing anything that requires a little bit of focus and concentration, if you switch tasks for five minutes, then actually it'll cost you quite a lot of productivity. So again, it interrupted my workflow in a way that the cheap one didn't. I mean, I did want to be able to recommend one of these just for a kind of affiliate marketing point of view. Um, you know, with an eye on possibly monetizing this channel at some point, but I really can't. Some improvements compared to the cheap one, but the shortcomings do not justify the jump up in price. So if you got this far, this is usually a channel about fixing and using multi-track tape recorders. If you'd like to see more stuff like that, then please give me a like and a subscribe. But in any case, thank you for watching.